21 degrees. The flag is out. Stuart O'Grady is almost ready to get the race underway. The Santos Tour Down Under for 2023 has started. It's stage one for the women. This is the first of three stages. They make their way from Glenelg through to Aldinga, 110.4 kilometres. Brody Chapman, the Australian champion, putting some of her mountain biking skills to good use as she moved up the inside of the peloton. They've turned off the main road now, Grace, and you can see there is more of a concerted effort to fight for position at the front of the peloton. Indication now with just how far to go, they will have been able to see that. Capone making a bid to try and get the points. Or is it Verhoost who's going forward for FDJ? The reaction coming just a little bit further behind, and that is Claire Steeles. Verholst it is who gets the points. Now leading it out, it's Loretta Hansen. She opens up the throttle. Also in the mix is Alex Manley. We've got Brown coming through for FDJ. She's been followed by Alex Manley. Brown collecting the points and the time bonus. Manley in second position. Roseman Gannon in third. And the speed increasing. It's Georgie Howe is at the front for Jaco. The reaction coming from FDJ for Hulster moving forward. The winner of the Queen of the Mountains points. Jessica Allen rolling through to the front. This is uh, Carolee DeMay from San Michel. The fight is on now, Gracie, for position at the front. They change direction. The wind hits them differently, and the tempo goes through the roof. Taylor Wiles on the front, followed then by Lisa Klein. Sprat number 11 has won this race three times before, but this is a unique opportunity in 2023 to be the first winner of the Santos Tour Down Under as a World Tour event. So the time bonus at the intermediate sprints, three seconds for the win, two and one for the minor placings. For the stage finish, it is 10 seconds for the win, six and four for the minor placings. Izzy Carnes now goes on the attack. The Australian under 23 time trial champion, Gina Ricardo from Bridge Lane going with her. Two of the local teams, ARA Skip Capital, Bridge Lane attacking the world's best. The peloton now being led by the FDJ team. They're the teammates of Grace Brown. Grace Brown won the first of the intermediate sprints. The second one is a smidgen over five kilometers away as they head back towards Wollonga. The gap to the two leaders, a minute and 18 seconds. Izzy Khan, so impressive. I love this attitude, Gracie Elvin, by a 19-year-old racing alongside some of her childhood heroes and deciding, you know what, I'm up for an attack. Can Gina Ricardo catch her by surprise? Plenty of signs for Go M. That's for Emily Watts. They go through the finish line and no sprint at all. Gina Ricardo didn't challenge. 100 kilometers done, 10 kilometers remaining. Izzy Carnes and Gina Ricardo being caught by the peloton as it is Trek Segafredo who open up the throttle. They make the final sweep around before they can see the finish line in Aldinga. It's a long lead out happening from Ruby Roseman Gannon. Alex Manley did a super job, but they might just run out of legs. Georgia Baker looking good here, but she's going to have to jump on the wheel of other teams. The sprint opens up. Spratt is sweeping around the outside. Spratt has been waiting patiently. Baker coming up through the middle. Aldergeist is there as well and charging up through the center of the pitcher. It's Picklook. Picklook is getting the win for human powered health. Daria does it on the finish line. What a surprise, Packets. The way that they were all sprinting tells us how difficult a tailwind sprint can be. Usually, if it's a headwind finish, you can really leave it late, get out of the saddle and power to the line. But the speed was so high in those last three kilometers that they were all pretty gassed and almost all of them having to sprint in the saddle in that last 100 meters. There she is, number 21. Silver medalist last year at the World Championships in the individual time trial. One of the big favorites to take out the title here at the Santos Tour Down Under. Tough to get the first breakaway to go. Here goes Gina Ricardo once again from Bridge Lane. Oh, 
and Manley on the right hand side of the screen. Roseman Gannon coming down the middle. It's Capone in blue, second from yesterday. She's trying to take the point. She wants to dab the brakes to let Brown come over the top, but preventing Brown from getting maximum points. It was Sanguinetti who collected the three second time bonus. The challenge is coming. Is it Claire once again, who was second over the top yesterday? It is the Brit. Claire from Claire Steeles, it is from the Israel team. Steeles trying to steal the points over Verhulst. Well, we've got our answer for FDJ. They're allowing Verhulst to fight for the Queen of the Mountains jersey. She looked across the shoulder. She was hoping that the battle would let up with Steeles, but it hasn't. Verhulst holds on though. She takes the points. She extends her lead in the race for the FX Queen of the Mountains jersey. What a great way to open up the week to have Ali Wollaston claiming the Schwab Classic Criterium race. It really sets you up to have that confidence. You're all a bit nervous when you haven't raced too much in the early parts of the season, not sure how your fitness was going in the pre-season training. And, and some of these national teams too, they're coming together as a composite team. So they don't really get to race together a lot sometimes. So it's about bonding really quickly about having a team plan and, and being committed to it some different objectives and personalities that come together track riders that are in these national teams as well and it is the zaf racing team who is the next to launch an attack and this is silvestri deborah silvestri she was involved in the fall yesterday gracie she came in two minutes and two seconds behind the rest of the peloton this is a great bounce back by silvestri another attack off the front of the peloton Sylvestri at Lovesome Company. The it's a Kiwi who's going forward. The next major challenge for the day is 20 kilometres away, and that is the second of the Zip Track Intermediate Sprint at Summertown. The pink colours, EF, Lauren Stevens. She looks to have made the split. Second place finisher in this race in 2018. FDJ, that is Victoire Gilman, who's gone across. FDJ have been aggressive from the start. They like this situation. I'm of the view that it could be to their interests not to collect them before the sprint. As we see the next attack from the breakaway, Claire Steeles, who's been active at all of the Queen of the Mountains points, is the one to go on the attack. Not happy with the composition, not happy with how they're working. She wants even bigger time. Brody Chapman looks really good out there wearing the green and gold jersey as the national champion. She's gotten away, gotten a little gap on the peloton and they can see Claire Steele's just up the road. Sprint 100 metres. The finish line is 100 metres and this is no sprint. It's too hard for it to be a sprint. This is nearly as difficult as yesterday's Queen of the Mountains point. Claire Steeles picks up three points in the race for the Zip Track points classification. She gets a three second time bonus as well in the general classification. And next across the line, it was Manley, followed by Brown, and then Spratt. She's after the Ochre jersey. The three-time winner wants to be the first winner of the Santos Tour Down Under as a World Tour event. Over the top of Mount Lofty, 10 kilometres to the finish line. It was a brief look across the shoulder. Spratt has put her cards on the table. Manley moves up towards the front for Jaco Ulula. She's got Williams behind her. Di Francesco is the next in line. It's an uphill sprint through to the finish line. Manley leads out. She's got a small gap. It's Williams in second. Di Francesco is not surrendering. Williams is charging at Manley, but it's too late. It's Alex the Great. Manley was magnificent. Howard Health, they're continuing their good tour. In fact, she was third. Nina Billsman was third. It was DeFrancesco who was fourth. Grace Brown was fifth. Spratt in the group. She didn't get gapped at all, so she didn't lose any additional time. So we're watching the sign on, the final sign on before the third stage, the last stage gets underway. Nervous anticipation, Gracie, because this is where the race will be decided. Alex Manley in conversation with Georgie Howe. Georgie Howe, number five, she was one of the stars of the show yesterday. The super domestique of the stage. 
battle between her and Brody Chapman for that title. It hasn't taken long, and not surprisingly, it is the Bridge Lane team along with the uh, Coupe team. And this looks like it is the young mountain biker, Lily Pollack, who is on the attack, sweeping through the corner. Reaction coming from behind. She's almost overshot it. She saves it. Well, that's a complete loss of momentum for the rider from Bridge Lane. This is Dunford, Georgia Dunford, who was on the attack from the uh, Coop High Tech Products team. And is this... This is uh, Gina Ricciardo. Of course it is. Why would we need to check? Bridge Lane going off the front. It was always going to be Gina Ricciardo. <laughs> she was. has not missed anything, Gracie. She hasn't. She is super reliable. She will be playing the team captain's role in the team Bridge Lane. In a moment like this, they don't really go into battle against each other. They'll share the prizes to make sure that their rhythm isn't interrupted. And that's exactly what is happening. Gina Ricardo across the line in first position. Georgia Danford in second spot. This is for a one second time bonus. And the Oka jersey, the race leader, she wants that one second to increase her buffer over her rivals. But challenging is Pikaluk. The winner of the opening stage, it's the pole who collects the points and takes away the time bonus. There's been an attack coming out of the peloton, and the good news is it's the youngest rider in the race. Lucy Stewart has attacked from ARA Skip Capital, and the peloton, they've paid respect to the youngster. A top 10 finish on stage one, and they're up in the tempo as well. This is a strong ride by Lucy. And gaining lots of experience is Lucy Stewart. She's going to make contact. It's gone from two to three out in front. Brilliant performance by Stewart. But what it also tells us, Gracie, is if Lucy Stewart can ride across this gap on her own, it demonstrates how quickly the peloton can close it down. Now, 100 metres to the sprint. Gina Ricardo here having the conversation with Stewart. Does Stewart get to take the points? If it came down to a raw sprint, I'd be backing Stewart to win it. The others have recognised it. Stewart collects the maximum. She gets three points in the race for the zip track points classification, the battle for blue. A rider from the Israel Premier Tech team slipping forward, but it's certainly not an aggressive attack. The Kiwis want a piece of the action. ARA skip capital also going with the move. Just sensing a chance. Maybe something here can slip away, get underneath the radar. But we're seeing number 76 getting dropped out of the trio. She's had a fantastic ride today. Georgia Danford is losing contact. She spent the day off the front with Gina Ricardo, was then joined by Lucy Stewart, and it was Danford who was the one who initiated the breakaway. These are tough roads. As I have with Gina Ricardo, but it's just about all over. No doubt she'll receive the most combative prize today. She'll be really Happy to be able to get onto that podium. Steals with the red number, the most combative yesterday. It's now number two, Manly, who's got some combating to do just to stick with this group. Hats off to number 13, the Australian champion. She laid it all out there, not for herself. She did that for a teammate. And here she goes. It's the Sprat attack. She did it yesterday. She was caught near the end. She's got a small gap. It's Brown who is chasing. 1.3 kilometres to the top of the climb. That's 1,300 metres of opportunity for Spratt. Rough calculation is 17 seconds. Back to Grace Brown. Similar to what we saw at the top of the climb yesterday to Mount Lofty. Across the top for Spratt. She collects the points for the FX Queen of the Mountains classification and she gets a handful of left and she goes onto the big chain ring. This reminds me of when Brown was chasing former world champion Lizzie Dignan at the Liège, Bastogne Liège race. She didn't quite make it and today she doesn't want to let that happen. She is about to get onto the back wheel of Amanda Spratt. Cold game of poker being played by Brown. 200 metres to go, they'll survive. Brown now pounces. She opens up the gap. She gets the better of Spratt. The brilliance of Brown takes the stage and she wins the Santos Tour Down Under. Spratt in second position. The sprint for third still to come. Grace, after what was a very hectic final, that's an amazing victory. Well done. Yeah, um, I'm really pleased. 
Uh, the team did an awesome job today. It was a little bit more calm for most of the race, but um, yeah, they led me out into the final climb and I knew that uh, Amanda was going to be really good on, on the corkscrew, but I just kept her within distance knowing that, yeah, I could potentially catch it back on the descent and, yeah, was able to do it. So it's really cool to take this victory after some awesome work from my team all week and, um, yeah, I'm just really grateful.